Hey everybody, it's Lori Ann. This is uh, day two of, yesterday I talked about being vulnerable and um, having a challenge for everybody about, you know, just uh, getting out there and being real. Well, this is part of mine. My internal challenge is that I want to do this for 30 days, probably just going to be like Monday through Friday at least. But today I want to talk a little bit more about um, piggyback. You know, yesterday we talked about authenticity and today we're going to talk about raising the bar. Um, in my first book, Rethink Leadership, Four Lessons to Make You Remarkable, I the first chapter is about raising your own bar. And I, I think back to, you know, how do we as um, people of influencers or uh, leaders, whether you are leading one or many people, like how are you raising the bar? Because one of the things that I believe as leaders is that we need to be uh, role models. And so in chapter one, so we're going to talk about raising your bar. What are you doing to constantly improve yourself? Um, if you're joining us now, you know, hi everybody. Type in how you continually raise your own bar. For example, one of the things that I did today, you know, raising my bar is about health and um, trying to be, trying to be, take control of my health so that I'm, I'm not at the mercy of doctors and surgeons um, taking care of me later in life. So I went for a four mile run. And it's been a long time that I've actually run outside. Uh, if there's any runners out there, you know it's very different to run uh, outside versus on a treadmill inside the gym, which is what I typically would do. So one of my goals is to, uh, this fall, I want to be able to run um, this half marathon that's up in Maine. I've done it a couple of times before, but um, it's been a number of years. So raising my bar is I've got to get out there, find the time, and get out there and run. 13.1 um, miles is, is a lot, <laughs> but that's my my way of internally challenging myself. Um, how are you doing? Another way that I do this is that I've got, you know, books that I read, um, conferences that I go to, you know, because I'm constantly learning not only for my audiences, but also for the clients that I coach one-on-one. -on -one. So I want to make sure that I always have, you know, like the latest and greatest, or just, you know, just even another way that of raising your bar is when you are talking with other people to help you know gather ideas hello where is it where so everybody just kind of like type in tell me where you're from because this is a uh, very fun to uh be able to call out um on you anyways um as you guys are typing um so where do you Manchester, UK. Thank you. I have not been to Manchester, but I've been to London. That was, uh, I do like to travel. Um, let's see. Thank you for the hearts. Let's see. So what other way are you raising your bar? Uh, I've got my, my little list here. You know, the reasons why we raise our bar. Um, one is just like, I think it's just internally, it's challenging for us. You know, I mean, if, if, if life stays the same, guess what? We get really, really bored. And if we get really, really bored, guess what? We are going to get disengaged with our own life, whether it's personally or professionally. Um, thank you. Um, Alex Underwood, how do you? It sounds like there might be a little bit more to that question. Um, I'll just give you a minute. How do you raise your bar? Okay, that's... It's exactly what what do you do to um, constantly improve because raising your bar I believe is about improvement um, you know like here's your bar and here's what's ex here's what's acceptable but you know like your bar is like where you know like basically cutting you, you're drawing a line in the sand um, personally how I do it is I, I read a lot um, I'm challenging myself like with, with my cl coaching clients and with my audiences. Um, I always want to be able to give my audiences, you know, some real usable information. I'm not one of those speakers that gets up there and just like, you know, is like a talking head. I actually want people to do stuff while they're sitting, um, 
in my workshop, in my audiences, so that they actually go off and can actually use this stuff immediately. I don't believe that um, the stuff that I'm giving them is like, okay, so after you follow these next 10 steps, then you'll be able to actually practice this. Um, do I have a sales background? Don't we all? I believe that life is all about sales. And yes, I used to actually work for Siemens and did was actually part of a sales team and my um, territory was all of New England. And that is actually part of my healthcare um, background. So let's see, what are some of the other ways that we can raise our bar? Um, how about with relationships, personally and professionally? Everyone in sales, no matter, exactly, that's exactly how I feel. If, um, you know who the best salespeople are? Little kids. You ever like, you know, like, mommy, can I have a cookie? I don't have kids, but I've got nieces and nephews and I've got sisters who have kids. And mommy, can I have a cookie? And it's like, oh, please, come on. You know, they just watch a child. They just, they're extremely tenacious when they really want something. So I'm really curious, like, you know, where do we lose that? you know, along life. So let's talk about how you're going to um, increase, raise the bar with relationships, you know, personally and professionally. You know, what, you know, are, what are we doing to improve, um, to become more engaged and more connected with people, um, both at work and at home, because they only ask questions. Questions make a great salesperson raise your bar and be a child. I love that. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, how else are you guys raising your bar? You know, let's, you know, this is like a group discussion almost with this Periscope. But so I do a lot of reading. I, you know, collaborate with a lot of other people because by talking with other people, I get more ideas. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and actually there's some courses on Concorsa, C-O-U-R-S-E, I think I'm spelling it wrong, um, but, but it's like there's so many websites now that offer a ton of different, um, like, I don't want to call them e-courses, but it's almost like going to school. And that's an, another way that I raise my bar. Go back to being interested in everything. Yes, going back to being interested in everything is a powerful tool. Surrounding yourself with positive thinking people. Isn't that the truth? Because there's so much negativity that's that's out there that surrounds us. I personally um, did an experiment where I actually listened to, like when I was in the car, um, I had Fox News on. Now, it's, or some, some other type of news programs. And to me, it's just, it's a lot of bickering and talking about a lot of the negativity that's out there in the world, both, you know, you know, wars and famines and, you know, all the other different crises. And so then I changed it. The following month, I listened to something much different that was more positive and noticed that my own personal mood, I actually was uh, more optimistic, more chipper. And that really goes down to, you know, surround ourselves with positive people and be really careful about what you listen to. So that's all about raising our bar, you know, being very careful about who we, who we talk to, who we listen to, and just our, the, the activities. So a book called Being Fans is a great one about raising bars. Oh, thank you. I, I will have to look into that. Thank you very much. I love your participation. And every day add 1%. That is so true. If we just improve by 1% every day, you know, you can imagine where you'll be, you know, not just a month from now, but um, a year from now. You know, when I'm with my audiences, here, this is a great one on this particular 1%. I talk about, I ask the audience, like, how many people play golf? And, you know, it is kind of a little bit of an aggravating game, uh, but I really, really enjoy it because I love being outside. Well, what if after each hole, after the first hole, I'm going to put a dime into this account. And after each hole following that, I will double whatever's in there. So the first hole is 10. The second hole is 20. The third one is 40, 40 cents. Then it's 80 cents. Then it's $1.60. And it's really rather flat line. 
until we get into the teens. Guess how much that pot would be worth at the end of 18 holes? It's over $13,000. And that all started from a dime and just doubling it. But it's the beauty of compound interest, so to speak. And so just improving a little bit each day, it seems like it's really flat line, but at some point you're actually going to skyrocket. So I hope that everybody out there, I'm going to bring this to an end. I hope that you'll follow me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is L-A Murabito, M-U-R-A-B-I-T-O. And feel free to um, tag me, you know, in, send me a tweet and let me know, like, what are some of the things about influence and leadership, th things that you really want to learn about. I've got a little bit of a list going on and I will see you tomorrow. So I'm just, sorry, I'm just like followed it to be great to have a one-on-one -on -one sometime. Oh, well, yes, yeah, so actually, actually so send me some information. Um, tweet me about that. I will talk to you guys all soon. Have a spectacular day and be remarkable.